mercy. You want to create a cinematic sequence, but you don't have the free time on hand to go out and capture brand new clips to put this sequence together. In this video, I am going to walk through how you can use old clips you've captured in the past, edit them to create a nice brand new cinematic sequence to post on your portfolio, YouTube, or your social media account. Siobhan Beckford, let us dive right into this one. So all those clips you saw in that previous cinematic sequence were captured around a year ago and I reused, recycled those clips to create this amazing cinematic sequence. Now I'm going to walk through a few pointers you should take into consideration when creating a sequence like this and when going forward capturing clips you plan to use in the future so you can use them into whatever workflow or project you wish to use going forward in the future. The first tip on the list will be to get the correct exposure whenever you're filming in an environment. Correcting your exposure while filming will save you the stress of trying to correct this mistake whenever you're editing. Correcting your exposure on set helps to make sure you don't crush your highlights or crush your shadows or get the wrong colors whenever you're filming something on set. You should always enable their zebra stripe patterns if you have them available on your camera or you can use that little exposure meter down at the bottom whenever you're filming that shows you the plus one, plus one and a half, plus two or minus one, minus zero to ensure you're having the correct exposure within your scene. On the Lumix S5, which I shoot on, I have the waveform, I have the histogram that helps to show me how my exposure and saturation is going. And I also have my zebra patterns enabled so I can see what is blown out or what is correctly exposed whenever I'm filming. Exposure, it's a very important thing to take into consideration when capturing shots. So you can have shots put down safe in case you want to create a cinematic sequence in the future and pull from these old shots. The next important tip on the list is frame rates. Now based on where you are in the world, you will have specifications as it relates to your frame rate. Where I am in the Western Hemisphere, we use 24 frames per second as our standard frame rate. You have persons who use 30 frames per second and 30 frames per second is also suitable for social media type of content. But let's get back on track with talking about frame rate. Capturing like regular interview, talking headshots kind of videos, you're free to shoot in 24, 25 frames per second based on where you are, as I mentioned before, and keep it at that frame rate because you don't plan on slowing down in the future. If you're capturing like a river flowing, cars passing, rain falling, an animal, other objects, you can capture that at 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second, because then you can slow down this video in post and create a nice buttery smooth slow motion video to make your cinematic sequence more cinematic and appealing to the eye of the viewers and maybe tell a better story because things look cooler in slow motion. Even if it's 30 frames per second and you slow it down to 24 or 25 frames per second, it will look better than the flat 24 frames per second. A lot of creators may complain that, oh, slow motion is overused and oh, don't use too much slow motion, but always capture at a higher frame rate in the event that you want to slow down a clip to use slow motion. It's better to have the option and use it or not use it than to want to slow down a clip and don't have the option of slowing it down. So try shooting in higher frame rates and if you need to slow them down in post to get some nice slow motion. Moving on to the next point. 
When you're capturing content, always try to shoot at the highest resolution your device can capture. For my Panasonic Lumix S5, it's 6K. For my DJI Mavic Air, it's 5.4K. So I'm always trying to capture at the highest resolution unless the highest resolution will affect other aspects of my video such as the highest frame rate and also the color profile that I can capture whether it's 8-bit or 10-bit but I always try to capture at the highest frame rate available in the event that I have to crop that video during editing. So if I shoot at 1080p and I want to zoom into a specific section of the film, that's going to get very pixelated very fast when zooming in because it's only 1080p. And I rarely post content in 1080p unless the client requests it in 1080p or I'm posting some vertical content. I always try to capture in the highest resolution available on the device so if i'm to crop in i will have a lot of room to crop in without losing too much detail so a good practice to follow shoot at high resolutions so you don't lose details if you have to crop in post-production The next tip on the list is to utilize log profile. If the device that you're using has 10 bit color, more than likely you're gonna have some form of log profile available on your camera. Always try to utilize a log profile, get used to it, get used to color grading. It gives more flexibility with dynamic range and gives you more control over your colors, your shadows, your highlights, whenever you're editing a video. Especially if you want to put some cinematic sequence together you're gonna want to tweak the colors and be all creative give a mood of the video you're trying to portray 10 bit just gives you way more flexibility when coloring I mean it's like billions of colors compared to millions in 8 bit so if you shoot in log shoot in 10 bit you will get way more flexibility to be creative whenever you're coloring your video so I would shoot in log profile and if you have a hard time converting from log to rec 709 i'm sure there's a conversion lot out there from your log profile to convert to rec 709 i use panasonic and dgi and i have my d log to rec 709 and my v log to rec 709 conversion lots both from the dgi website and panasonic website and i also bought the conversion lots that gamut has available for both log profiles and I use them in my workflow when I'm editing just drag and drop and that's it they're converted automatically I'll leave a link in the description to Gamut's website if you want to check out the lots they have available and also some conversion lots for whatever device it is that you use moving right along The next tip is to tell a story. Even though you're gonna be using old scrappy videos you shot and forget about and reviving them from the dead to create a cinematic sequence, don't be boring. Don't just slap two videos together. Oh, you jump from a fireworks night scene to a day at the beach. Try to tell a story. Try to blend the clips together. Be smooth. Don't confuse the viewer who is viewing your content and let them wonder what, what is going on here. Why am I looking at fireworks and then there's a beach? You can use a day scene here where you were at the river and flying your drone over the water. Then you transition to a beach. You're hovering your drone over the nice, mellow, tropical beach in a coconut you know enjoying yourself don't be too drastic try to tell a story use correct music to give off the mood you wish to give off in the video get some sound design done get some vfx involved tell a story don't be bland don't be boring and don't be out of the roof remember it's a cinematic sequence you don't have to give it a hollywood action movie kind of vibe even though Cinematic is very subjective these days, but you get what I'm saying. Tell a story. Tell your story. Yes, tell your story. Moving right along. And this is the last tip I will provide if you're trying to put a cinematic sequence together from old clips and you want a specific clip to add some spice or finish up 
the project, you can always go ahead and get some stock footages to fill the gap, get some stock assets to add some VFX to the clip, and even some stock audio, SFX, background music to tell a better story. Don't only depend on what you have at hand. You can go out there and accumulate resources to put a better project together. Remember, the content you're putting out is representing you and what you have up your sleeve, your skill set, what you've learned over the years. People watching it are going to be criticizing you as a creator based on the type of content that you're putting out. So take pride in what you do, put out the best and people will think of you as the best. Yeah, you put out the best, you're the best. You're the best, man. You're the best, girl. Yeah, do what you gotta do, be the best. Anyways, if you found this video interesting, remember to hit the like button so the algorithm can like me, push my videos to others. If you want to see more videos like these, hit the subscribe button so I can pop up in your notification whenever I drop a new video like this, I will be talking about the cinematic topic, the cinematic industry world, the cinematic universe more often on this channel. So stick around for that. And Siobhan Beckford as usual. Darn, I need a haircut. I'm signing out. See y'all. Peace. Mercy. My heart is filled.